Hello again, everyone. This is Raging Mantral. As I'm sure everyone is aware, there has been a interesting development in the Ukraine war. The young airman who has apparently obtained uh, classified documents and released them on a Discord server, a Minecraft server specifically, um, has brought to light some interesting things about the Ukrainian conflict. Now, a lot of people are focusing on the young man himself and what he has done and his online behavior. Um, but of course, this obscures the nature uh, and the contents of the briefing and what they mean. I went on a stream a couple of days ago on Charlemagne's channel uh, with Furious Pertinax, which of course I've linked in the show notes for everyone to look at on their own time. But in that stream, I saw something on the slides which made me um, a little hesitant. And I really did not think that the numbers of casualties um, were entirely accurate. And so I wanted to do a little bit of digging and, and really, really deep dive into the analysis of and the, like the number crunching of this whole conflict in regards to the casualties and the casualty ratio, etc. Because the truth is definitely uh, obscured here. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and get into it. As of this briefing, which was given on March 1st, 2023, the Russians had a starting army in the conflict of around 150,000 to 200,000 men. Um, now that's the figure that's been given since the very earliest days of this conflict. Uh, I don't really have a reason to doubt that number. Um, it seems to me that the invading Russian army forces, the proper Russian regulars, as it were, was around 150,000. And then you have a differential of 50,000 men who probably were made up of the various um, Luhansk and Donetsk militias, as well as the Chechens. Um, so just something that I noticed, um, I went through all of these slides um, that were given on this briefing, and I totaled up the amount of men for both the Ukrainian and the Russian side, and just to give us a ballpark number uh, of what the US intelligence community thinks um, is the manpower in the conflict. And the number that I came up with for the Russians um, on the high end was around 174,000 men. And 174,400 to be specific. Um, there's something I have to address before moving on, and that is the fact that there was uh, a meme that was going around. Uh, the Russians, after the slides were re leaked, they uh, released an edited version of the slides, which had the numbers flipped around, um, which is you know, totally fake. Um, they basically took the Ukrainian numbers, put them into the Russian column, and and flipped the numbers around again so that instead of 16,000 to 17,000 Ukrainian losses, you have 61 to 71,000 Ukrainian losses killed in action. So, I mean, this is just, this is, you know, just uh, something that isn't going to be accurate whatsoever, right? This is obviously a, a misinformation. Um, and it's very ham-fisted. Um, but the interesting thing is, it got me thinking, well, what if if the Russians are telling the truth by lying, okay? Um, in the similar fashion of how you think of a Russian as uh, in a sort of sleazy Eastern European kind of person, used car salesman. And, and what if the number actually is, um, you know, double the for the Ukrainians or 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 what have you or or for the Russians. Anyway, it just got me thinking and so I just wanted to delve into these numbers. All right, so for the um, Russian side, according to this uh, classified briefing, the Russians have lost around 
43 to 45,000 killed in action, and the Ukrainians apparently have lost 16,000 to 17,500 killed in action. This is where things get complicated for me. Um, as we know from other conflicts, uh, conventional wars you usually see around a five times uh, wounded to killed ratio. So for every one guy who gets killed in action, you have five guys who get wounded in action. If we take this high number of 43,000 men, um, that means that the total Russian losses um, would be 261,000 men. So 200. 27, 230,000 men plus 43,000 is around 260, 270,000 men. That's obviously nonsense, right? The Russians have not lost their entire armed forces that were present in the you know active duty armed forces at the start of the conflict, right? That's just nonsense. Um, however, the Ukrainian figure is is much lower. Um, and that number in terms of killed in action, I'm going to say is probably accurate because it's lower. Um, so let's go ahead and run with that and see if we can crunch the numbers and make them make sense. So, like I said, um, I calculated the total number of Russian forces on the slides uh, that the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff were briefed on uh, on March 1st. And I came up with a number, um, depending on this back access that I have pictured here, isn't exactly clear um, in terms of, of forces. Um, but in any case, the Russian forces are between 145,000 to 174,400. Um, and I looked into it and did my own math, and in either way, the numbers still add up with the casualties um, that, that the Russians have taken, if you assume... Um, uh, the 43,000 number. Um, however, like I said before, what if the Russian casualties were indeed swapped? In other words, somebody put the total number of casualties as killed in action on a PowerPoint slide instead of you know 45,000 total, right? So if you assume the 43 or 45 and a half thousand um, is total casualties, well, what kind of numbers do you get? Well, the total starting army of the Russian forces, including militia groups, etc., is 200,000 men, like we've said, and that's not including Wagner. However, if you add Wagner, that number is increased to around 220 to 222,000 men. And so if you subtract 222,000 minus by 43,000, you get around 174,000 men. If you subtract that number um, as if the Russians started with uh, you know, 30,000 less men, um, if their total number is the 145,000 currently, as I've stated, you still get, the, the numbers still do add up, right? Um, you still get around 145,000 men. Um, so assuming that the wound in action is five times the number of killed in action, how many killed in action would it take in order for you to get 45,000 dead, or 45,000 total casualties, I should say. Well, I did the, the number crunching, and that comes up to 7,500 killed in action on the Russian side, and 37,000 wounded in action. And that comes up to about 45,000, or 43,000. Now, how many casualties for Ukraine? So if we assume that the 16,000 killed in action number is correct, and I'm deliberately using the low number here to be generous um, on the PowerPoint slide, uh, of course we have five times the amount of wounded as killed. That means the total Ukrainian wounded in action number is 80,000 men. And if you add that with the 16,000 killed in action, the total Ukrainian couch these is uh, without uh, the missing is 96,000 men. So how does this compare with the Ukrainian army? 
the pre-war Ukrainian army, gendarmerie, paramilitary, special forces, and naval infantry, etc., is around 248,000 to 256,000, according to the uh, International Institute for Strategic Studies. They have a briefing that comes out every single year, which analyzes the militaries of the world in terms of their total manpower strength and the total strength of, of every single type of vehicle that they could possibly have, armored vehicles, tanks, surface-to-air missiles, aircraft, and the numbers involved. Um, so I did some interesting uh, digging with that on Charlemagne stream, but I'll stick with the casualties here for today because the, those numbers are still relatively uh, accurate. Um, so according to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff slides, the total AFU manpower on all front lines of every single axis is maximum 84,000 men. And that's taking the maximum number on those briefing slides and adding them all together. And that's how I get this figure of 84,000. If I add that 84,000 number to the 96,000 total number of casualties, that equals 180,000 men. That's nowhere near what the pre-war Ukrainian army was supposed to be. And of course, that army number isn't all frontline troops. They're all not combat troops. There's a lot of logistics and things involved, but these are just the total numbers. And that's a huge number that's missing. So where did they go? Well, so we've already established the 180,000 men are combined total men on the front lines, as well as the casualties that have been taken by the Ukrainians thus far in the conflict, both killed and wounded. As we saw on the slides for the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the um, Americans are attempting to build nine combat brigades um, with American and NATO provided equipment. And the Ukrainians, in addition, are building three combat brigades of their own. So that's nine to 12 combat brigades being built. How many men are required for these brigades? So it's very clear from the slides that what the Americans and the NATO allied forces are attempting to do for the Ukrainians is they're trying to build an armored brigade combat team. Now, this is a picture of a brigade combat team from the US Army uh, from 2013, which I pulled from Wikipedia. Um, from the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff slides, it's very clear that they're missing some things here. Um, they only have one element with motorized infantry. They have, so most of them don't have a lot of armor. They're, they're still relatively low in numbers of total armor and also in terms of artillery. But um, I'm going to say that the number of men in these armored brigade combat teams is somewhere between 3,000 to 5,500 men usually, right, in the American forces. Um, and like I said, they only have one motorized or mechanized battalion per brigade. So let's say all told that the brigade itself is, is 3,000 men. And if you add 500 men for all of the, you know, command, logistics, intelligence components, um, everybody who act, who's in these um, formations that aren't actually in combat arms, uh, you're going to get a figure of around 3,500 men or so. Um, and so this comes out for 9 to 12 AFU brigades, is somewhere between 31,500 to 42,000 men. So you might have noticed um, 42,000 men plus 180,000 is around 222,000 men. That's not near where the Ukrainian army was at the start of the conflict. Um, so what's missing? Well, I remembered from the Jimmy Thomas series of videos that all told there is about 25% of any given military formation that is logistics. And it made me think, well, okay, hmm, where is 
the this missing you know 20,000 men coming from well so I, I just assumed that on the Ukrainian side the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff um, briefings were probably lowballing that or only counting combat arms elements and the numbers for those so that's 84,000 um, for all told every single axis on all the front lines right it that those slides do not show logistical components headquarters and things like that um, they only show combat arms elements um, so if that's the case then let's add in the tail to this shall we if you assume that 25 percent logistics components for all ukrainian forces currently in the field um, you multiply that 25 percent times by 84,000, you get a figure of 21,000 21,000 plus 180,000 men equals 201,000. If you add the previous slides number of 42,000 men, you end up with 43,000 men, which is the ballpark number for the total Ukrainian army at the start of the conflict. So this is very fascinating to me, and this gives us a very in-depth picture explanation of where the Ukrainian army has gone and what has happened to it. And I think that this is probably the conclusion that the number of 43,000 or 45,000 um, for the Russian side, that's probably the total casualties. And the number of 16,000 KIA is accurate for the Ukrainian army at this point. As at least of March 1st, anyway. And that means that given the dearth of Ukrainian um, manpower because of their demographic shortage, uh, this is probably accurate for what they have and what they can commit to this conflict. And I want to be very clear. Um, the total number of Ukrainian forces at this point, um, even if you're assuming that they're at full mobilization and they've called all their reservists up um, for the an entire year now, um, this is probably the amount of men that Ukraine can field in at this time. Um, and the Russian forces, probably likewise, we haven't seen anything in regards with the 300,000 supposedly um, mobilized men that Russia is attempting to commit to this this conflict. Um, but that means that the Ukrainian forces, in addition to the 84,000 or 100,000 with logistics uh, men that they have in all of the axes, uh, plus the 42,000 men, they're only at 140,000 men, and they're basically at numerical parity with the Russians at the moment, which means that given what we know about Russian artillery superiority in both numbers and the amount of shells being fired, um, as well as the Ukrainian deficit in terms of artillery, uh, any sort of offensive maneuver is going to take an incredible amount of casualties. Um, and if the Ukrainians actually do launch this spring offensive, finally, with troops that are relatively untrained, they don't have artillery or air support, the Russians are now acquiring air superiority and air supremacy given the lack of Ukrainian air forces and, and surface-to-air missiles. Um, it means that any sort of Ukrainian offensive maneuvering is probably going to take very high casualties whenever this offensive gets launched this spring. So I just want everybody to bear in mind that that's what's going to happen. Um, and Ukraine, even though you have numerical parity, um, you may even have local superiority in numbers in if the expected offensive axis is indeed in Zaporizhia, but you are not going to be able to effectively take that fight to the Russian forces, to the enemy in Zaporizhia or wherever this offensive comes. And you're not going to be able to retake all of the territory that Russia has taken. It's just not going to happen. You don't have the logistics. You don't have 
enough manpower because any attacking force will require a two to one, uh, at least a local two to one or even three to one numerical advantage in terms of manpower in order to um, succeed in any sort of uh, offensive operation. So it's just not going to happen. With that being said, uh, I'd like to conclude um, my take on these slides. Make sure that you check out my stream uh, with Charlemagne for more in-depth analysis on the leaked slide briefing. And uh, also check out Jimmy Thomas' video uh, on the Ukraine conflict. He has a series of videos actually uh, on the Ukraine conflict, um, which I'm also going to make sure that I link in the show notes. Please check those out. Um, last thing, uh, please make sure that you like, share, subscribe, and uh, check out my Substack. You can follow me on Twitter, etc. All of the, the shilling things. Um, please do that. Um, it really helps my channel grow. Uh, I'm still a relatively small channel, and I really would like to get the word out for this particular bit of information. Thanks again. Have a wonderful day.